Five. All right then. Uh. All right. <laughs> okay. So okay, we're live, right? Live. Okay. Okay. Yes, we are live. Yeah. Before we start here, I'd like to say welcome everybody that just that have just recently joined us within the last thirty minutes or so. This is the California Fire Relief Marathon, a marathon that is raising to bring wildfire relief efforts to California and other north uh, western states. I hope you enjoy the rest of the run here because we have a pretty exciting one. New Super Luigi U. Go ahead and take it away, Amcham. All right, then. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is M. Eight, and this is New Super Luigi U for the Nintendo Wii U. Um, this is the DLC for the game New Super Mario Bros. U, uh, where um, the difference between this game and Mario Bros. U, um, well, it's it's the similar it's a similar game than uh, uh, to Mario U, uh, except the levels are different. The, however, the levels are more similar theme. Uh, Mario is not in this game, as you can see, his hat's there in the intro, uh, but instead you play as Luigi. And uh, Luigi's gameplay style is a little bit different than Mario's because he jumps higher, he floats more, and he slips more. So um, <laughs> makes uh, makes it really hard to really to get used to uh, for a casual standpoint. Uh, the levels, every level has well, okay, every level gives you 100 seconds to beat. So it's a very fast-paced game, um, and it's also really difficult as well. Uh, but in a speedrun, it's actually really fun. Uh, so the category that I'm running is All Castles. Um, all Castles differs from any percent because in any percent you skip worlds 2, 3, 4, uh, and 6. In this category, you, do, you, get to see, you, you get to see all 8 worlds. Now, unfortunately, um, I was going to have Conman Gamer uh, come in here and do the commentary, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it. Uh, due to some uh, personal things that came up for him that, that caused him to back out. So it uh, looks like I'm on my own here for the commentary. So uh, we'll see how, how well I can do. So uh, this game has a signature power-up. The signature power-up is the acorn. It's a super acorn, which will allow me to turn into a squirrel. And with the squirrel, I can glide through a bunch of levels. So I'm going to be getting one as soon as I can here. Just like that. And if I don't keep it throughout the whole run, then I'll be keeping it for as long as as long as possible. All right, so that was the first level. Pretty fast. You can already tell that this is a going to be a really fast-paced game. What can you tell me about the category you're playing? Um. Right. So every category. Uh, hold on, this second level is really hard, so I'll... Uh, so in this level, uh, there is a star right over here. And the star allows you to run a little bit faster, so it saves a few seconds in this level. Ugh, okay, that minor mistake isn't such a big deal. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna safe this out. All right. Um, if I was a little bit faster, then I would have gotten either a 78 or a 79. Uh, so I didn't felt confident enough that I would actually get a 78. I probably could, but it's better to play it safe. Uh, anyway, um, every every category, with the exception of 100%, is divided up into three different. Uh, ways you can go about. Uh, there is a category where you can play as Luigi only. There is a category where you can play as Nabbit only, which is a new character to this game. And I'm actually going to be using Nabbit right now in this level. And then there's a category where you just where you can use both Luigi and Nabbit, which is the version that I am playing right now. So this is our first fortress. Uh, fortresses are usually... Oh gosh. 
Uh, a little bit of a rough start here. All right, I'll take that five second loss. Uh, fortresses are usually vertical climbing levels, um, and this one in particular is was pretty tough with all with the um, with climbing those gears. So every fortress you're you're gonna be fighting this mini boss known as Boom Boom, and Boom Boom is very straightforward. You just jump on him three times, and that's pretty much it. So to talk about Nabbit here. Uh, Nabbit is, of course, as like I said, the new character introduced into this game. Um, Nabbit can't die, so uh, you play as Nabbit by holding ZL on the gamepad or the B button on your Wii remote. And because Nabbit can't die, we use Nabbit on levels where there are a lot of enemies, or in any case where the fastest level time or the fastest end, end time is a double digit number. Um, uh, which because, and the reason is because Nabbit cannot get fireworks at all, and you get fireworks when the last two digits of, when you end the, when you end the level with the last two di digits on your clock being, uh, a double digit. You get fireworks. Yep. Uh, so we try to avoid fireworks as, as we, as, as much as we can. So on levels where the fastest time is a double digit, we, we use Nabbit. So the acorn power-up that you just saw me pick up earlier, um, I'm picking that up as a safety. It takes 8 seconds to get. Um, technically it's faster to skip it, but I am picking it up for marathon safe. Uh, this is, since this is a marathon, there is a chance where I will be losing my power-up. So it's nice to have as much acorns as possible. There are uh, three free opportunities for an acorn. Uh, you can get an acorn at the end of at the end of a level if you end if you end the level with the clock being a 77, uh, which is a nice safety. Uh, but uh, I'll try not to go for it. But if the run ends up being bad, then I'll go for one. I'll try not to do not to do it too much. Okay, so coming up is Lemmy's castle. So castles tend to be harder than fortresses in a casual playthrough, but um, in this game, I find them to be a little bit easier. So since this is a warpless category, I don't have to worry about collecting the star coins at all. So most of the levels you're seeing me just hold right, for the most part. Okay, Lemmy Koopa. Lemmy Koopa will throw these bombs at you, but no problem. If there's any way you could mess up a boss fight, it's usually the first hit. And then the other two and then the two other hits are really straightforward from there. So there we go, that's world one. So something I always like to ask uh, runners about their game, is there something that's not obvious to a viewer that y about your run that they would not understand by just simply watching? Um, for, uh, what do you mean by that? I mean, like, if there's something in the run you're doing that you're having to adjust to or work with that isn't obvious to the visual eye. Um, I think the hardest thing about about this game is trying to get used to the game to the gameplay mechanics. Um, this game is very different compared to the rest of the New Super Mario Bros. series. Um, so that was my hardest part of getting uh, uh, when I picked this game up casually. But once you get used, to, once you can get used to the game's physics. 
then it starts to become really fun. Okay, so right here, Nabbit's gonna capture Toad's stuff from the Toad house. And Toad's gonna tell you to to catch Nabbit and get his stuff back, but uh, I don't know. There's two things. You're, now you're put into two situations. You either rescue the princess, or you save Toad's stuff. So, because I want to go fast, I'm sorry Toad, but uh, I got a date to catch. The reward you get for catching Nabbit is a pea acorn, which is just like the super acorn, but you can fly infinite times. Um, but um, it's way out of the way to get, unfortunately. Uh, so we don't use those at all in the run. In 100%, you do you, you do use pea acorns. Uh, there are some levels that have really cool strats with using the pea acorn, but unfortunately, you, you won't get to see any of those. So this is a level that you uh, that's a little bit different between this category and the Luigi only category. Um, in Luigi only, you would do 2-2 instead, um, because it's really hard to get around the Piranha Plants in this level if you're doing it as Luigi. So it's better to do 2-2 instead, even though it's a slower level. Okay, this level's really technical, but we'll see what, we'll see what happens here. Seventy-four door entrance. That's a really good time. All right, uh, you can read donations for now, since this boss fight's very straightforward. Yeah, not too many big donations right now. I would like to take this moment to say why you should donate, though. We do. Uh, we are here to raise money for the American Red Cross, who have been assisting in wildfire relief efforts throughout California and many other wildfire-affected uh, states. Uh, it is something we are extremely passionate about here at this marathon, and we would love to be able to see our goal um, met and possibly even surpassed. Uh, so coming up is the first part of RNG, and uh, if you're going for a really if you're going for a really good time in all castles, then this is the most frustrating part of the run. Well, one of the most frustrating parts. Um, you have to get bypass these two enemies here, the Firebro and the Goomba. There's an acorn that I'll try to get while I'm avoiding these enemies. Uh, there are ways to manipulate these uh, these enemy patterns, but it's very unreliable. Okay, I ran into a fire bro. Uh, ran into a fire bros. Uh, it loses less time than a goomba, but it still loses time. So that was really unfortunate that I that I had to run into one of those enemies. Look at these fire bros and goombas working together, mind gaming you. Yeah. Uh, I want that acorn. Uh, okay, I'll. All right, that's fine. Alright, that sucks. So I wasn't able to get that acorn. Um, or, well, I could have went back for it, but eh, it wasn't going to be worth it. Especially with that Goomba hanging around. So yeah, that's complete- so that- that's RNG. Not much I could- I could have done there. So you just pray that you can get past those enemies without running into- w w without- without running into any of those enemies. 
as well as trying to get that acorn if you can. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that I was able to avoid the acorn. It, well, it technically saves time, but it's not really recommended in this category. Alright, I'm actually going to be doing this level twice to get the secret exit. And that may seem weird, but uh, it'll make a little bit of sense later. So the secret exit is by breaking these blocks right here. How is any how is any casual player gonna know that you can ground pound those blocks? Yeah, well, the pipe kind of sticking half out like that is kind of your big clue. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so this little feature is uh, momentum boosting here. Uh, so basically, whenever you spin jump, you preserve a lot of momentum. Uh, so that makes it very useful for Well, this that's actually the one reason why Luigi saves time over Nabbit here We used to do this level as Nabbit because there's a lot of prime plants they have to bypass uh, but um, I found out that uh, Luigi saves One in-game second Because of the fact that when you spin jump uh, off of these rolling plat uh, off these rolling pl platforms you preserve you preserve your momentum, so you can fly really fast, and I just think it's really cool. But it's also really risky at the same time because you do have a chance of running into the the enemies while doing so. Either that or or messing up a little bit of your movement. And with that being said, um, for your ba just like most most 2D Mario games, your basic form of movement is you want to slide down down any down slopes and jump up any up slopes. It is slower, however, to slide down any really steep downhill slopes because at that point you're just traveling down really fast rather than going right really fast. Correct. Now, in this boss fight, it's technically faster to damage boost through that giant pokey in order to hit Morton faster, but um, it, I don't like that. I don't like doing that because I'd rather save my acorn for other levels in the case that something happens in other levels as well. Oh god, not fighting Morton without this suit? Ugh. Yeah. It's a little bit trickier to, to fight Morton uh, at, in Mario U because Mario doesn't really have the jump height that Luigi has. Now as for controller preferences, it is actually faster to use the gamepad of the game because of text boxes and save menus. So as you can see on this save menu, I'm actually tapping the no option when it's asking me to save uh, instead of just manually hitting no. So it saves just a little bit of time, but it adds up over the course of the run. Now here's your first split path. Uh, you can you have the option to choose either worlds three or four, and both worlds will take you to world five. Um, and well, technically, true warpless would be w would have you can you would do one of the worlds and then go to world five. Uh, but we agreed that all castles would be more more exciting to watch than uh, seven worlds. So you'll be seeing both worlds three and four. So right now I'm in world four because doing so will save just a little bit of time in world three later.
Okay, the platforming is easier in this level with Luigi, but it's technically faster with Nabbit because the fastest time you get is a 77. Okay, I messed up a little bit there, so I might be getting a 76. Just to give people a quick reminder, uh, after this run, we do have an Undertale race coming up, and one of the bid wars we have for that race involves hugging or shunning the goat. Ooh, yes! I love that war. So, if you want to, you know, make a difference here in somebody's life, you can. I want someone to hug the goat. This level is really painful with Luigi because there's a lot of spikes as well as a lot of falling off uh, icicles. Uh, but with Nabbit, you can walk on the spikes, so pretty overpowered. Oh dang! So is there like in a, a hidden Luigi 8-bit version everywhere? Yes, every level has at least one um, like Luigi tribute to Luigi. Um, a lot of them are really hidden, and there are some where you need to have fireworks in order to find all of the uh, hidden Luigi tributes, which is actually really cool. I would actually, I was thinking about developing a category where you, ca you can find all the hidden Luigi tributes because um, I think that would be really fun. Just to show people like where all the hidden Luigi tributes are. Oh, I hang out with a lot of friends who love arbitrary categories, so I'm all for it. Yeah. Okay. So, af after defeating the first three fortresses of, of- any of the first three fortresses of your choice, um, then you get these cutscenes where the castle gets more evil looking, and in any percent you go through, you go through three fortresses, so it kind of works out. By the way, um, little- okay. Oh, shit, okay. Uh, so that was bad. I picked up a power-up there. Um, whenever you pick up a power-up as Nabbit, uh, it turns into one-ups. So it's a really easy one-up grind for- uh, uh, j by picking up a lot of power-ups, uh, but it wastes time at the end of the level because you have to watch Nabbit, uh, you know, transfer all of the power-ups into one-ups. Another piece of a little, another minor optimization is that anytime I'm playing as I'm playing a level with Nabbit, I'm saving two frames because the because Nabbit's end of level animation is two frames faster than Luigi's. Wow, what a speedrunner! Saving frames. Yeah. And another optimization is that you might is you might have seen me every time I'm hitting a flagpole um, I am turning back just a little bit and that's because it saves a, a few frames uh, so that you don't have to see your character turn around uh, during the flagpole animation and speaking of that um, it doesn't matter where you hit the flagpole as long as it's not the top where you can get the one up because the flag has to come down, has to come all the way down anyway. But if you get the one up, uh, then um, the flag comes down uh, before you do. Okay, so I messed up just a little bit there, so my cycles were a little bit off. It's kind of unfortunate, but. We're not dead yet. That's good. Yeah. 
So this level is a speedrunner's favorite level because there's a lot of thwomps and you're basically... Look at how many thwomps there are. You're, and you're trying to run past... You're trying to run underneath all of these thwomps right here. So it's a very, very fast paced level. It's really hard casually, but really fun to speedrun. Alright, you can continue reading if you want. Don't really have much to read here, unfortunately, but reminder folks, we are California Fire Relief. We're here to raise money for a good cause, and I sincerely hope that you too want to uh, see us reach our goals. We do have other runs coming up after this. We have, of course, the aforementioned race of Undertale. And we also have Super Bomberman R coming up afterwards. Alright, so now we're going to backtrack all the way back to do World 3. And before I go to World 3, you might have saw that there was a baby, Yo a blue baby Yoshi in the beginning of, of this world. And I'm going to be picking it up. And this is going to save just a little bit of time in World 3. Uh, world 3 is a water world. Uh, so there's going to be a few swimming levels. And when you carry Baby Yoshi, you swim faster. So that's gonna save time in 3 2. That's the that's the reason why Luigi is just a little bit easier to, to play as uh, for this level. Uh, the platforming is easier, but the reason I'm I am using that is because when you have Baby Yo Yoshi with you, the flag fly animation's much slower. All right, so now we're, now I'm gonna show you uh, the capability of Baby Yoshi here in this next level. Oops. So yeah, you basically swim really fast. Uh. Okay, now there's a there's technically another water level in 3-5, but I'm losing Baby Yoshi now, uh, because it doesn't save a lot of time in 3-5, and that any time Baby Yoshi's on the map, you lose a few frames for every time Baby Yoshi's with you on the map and you begin a level, because you can't start a level right away, as Baby Yoshi has to catch up to you on the map in order for you to start a level again, and it adds up in this world. So that's a strat, which is a strat that I found, that I found. Was, uh, I there was an old route where you, we kept Baby Yoshi up until 3-5, but I, but a month ago I found out that that's slower.
So this is the only ghost ship in the game. And usually go any ghost level, ghost houses or this for, for in particular, they're usually meant for tricking players casually. But in this game, the ghost houses are very linear. So there's no, mm. there's no real puzzles to, for you to solve. Well, they couldn't really throw you something too complex at you with a 100 second timer. <laughs> I mean, well, I guess. So in 3-3, you have the option to to obtain a penguin suit, which would save a little which would save a little bit of time in 3-5 and the castle. Uh but I don't want to lose my acorn suit, so I'm just gonna do uh, 3 5 and this level as Nabbit. Now this level, um, I slowed down right there uh, because uh, no matter how fast you play this level, you're gonna be early on that uh, on that cycle. Okay, so 3-5, like I said, uh, there was, we had a, I had an old route where you keep Baby Yoshi all the way up until this level, uh, but I found out it doesn't save that much time, and I would be losing more time if I if I kept Baby Yoshi up until this level, because in this level you're not swimming horizontally, you're doing a bunch of vertical swimming, so it really doesn't save a lot of time uh, just having Baby Yoshi with you in this level, because all you're doing is swimming up. Okay, so in this castle, it's really up uh, all personal preference on which character you can use, either Luigi or Nabbit. Um, most people usually play as Nabbit, specifically for this next section right here, which is the water section. And this water section, there are these homing torpedoes that will home in at you and try to shoot you down and kill you. Um, but um, okay. But um, I play as Luigi. I like to play as Luigi here because the platforming is easier. And like I said, it's really all preference. There's no, there is no time difference at all. There's no time difference at all because um, there are no flagpoles. So now it's defeating boss animation isn't isn't any faster. So Larry is not random at all. As long as you know where he's gonna spawn, or where he's gonna come out of his shell, then it's very trivial. Like that. There's not really a lot of bosses that have that have too much randomness into them, and even so, it's very minor. That doesn't really make too much of a difference over the course of the run. Okay, so remember, like, a bunch of minutes ago where I got the secret exit of 2-4? Um, now is the, now's the time where I actually make use of that. Uh, because coming up, uh, if I just kept going uh, up to that path that just opened up, it would take me to the airship. And the airship is a really long auto-scroller. There's a really long introduction cutscene before you begin that level. Um, as well as... 
a really, really painful boss fight, and after that, a really long cutscene at the end of the level. So we try to avoid all that by doing by going all the way up here, by backtracking to do this secret level. The only thing that was missing from that was an auto scroller. Uh, there, uh, there is, uh, that airship is an all-scroller. Oh. Oh, never mind. It was, in fact, one of the worst things you could possibly have done. Yeah, so, um, backtracking all the way back over to do this level is faster, is much faster than doing the airship. But do not worry, there is another airship that is, that is mandatory to go through. So you will get to see what an airship looks like in this game. Alright, so coming up is World 5. And World 5 is when the category starts to get pretty interesting. In, ter in, terms, of, in terms of level routing. Um, you know, the first four worlds were really straightforward. You just beat the world as fast as you can, and in this world, in, in this world, uh, there's a lot of levels. Uh, but um, thankfully, in this world, you get to skip a lot of them, and you're gonna see after this level. So this part right here, these three prop plants, this is the only reason why Nabbit saves time over Luigi. Otherwise, then. Um, it's really precise. It's a really precise level. Alright, so in any percent, you would do 5-3, because it's a faster level than 5-2. Than uh, but we don't do 5-3 at all, because what, what's going to happen in this level is I'm going to be getting the secret exit here. And what the secret exit allows me to do is skip a bunch of, of this world. You can do a much faster strat by ground pounding without doing that extra jump that I just did. But it's really risky. and Because uh, you do have a high chance of dying. Because uh, you can not ground pound. And slide off the set of blocks that you're supposed to ground pound on and then just fall in the poison water. It's a very embarrassing mistake. Either that or some weird, some other weird stuff happens that it ends up not saving more time than you would save. Is it the case where the poison may as well be lava? Um, yeah, the poison water is, is death. So, this secret exit skips the entire gloomy section as well as the fortress and this is the only fortress that we skip in the run so it's really cool because the gloomy section is very very painful to do okay nice i got it uh, that is a newer strat that I just that I that I recently picked up in practice. It is really hard because uh, that very last Sumo Bro is on a different cycle. If you were to do a different strat, uh, this this strat saves two seconds over the more consistent method. Uh, technically one second because doing the more consistent method you get a 77, but uh, this strat the strat that I just did uh, guarantees a 78 if you can get if you can get past the very last Sumo Bro, which is a lot more precise if you if you do that strat. So this whole level is really easy with Luigi, but the only reason Nabbit saves time in this level is because of the boss fight, and you'll see you'll see in just a little bit why.
Okay, so the reason why Nava saves time in this boss fight is because Iggy won't come down from the ceiling unless you do that. All the fireballs have to leave the screen in any way in order for Iggy to come down. That's the only reason why he saves time. Ooh, that was close. Uh, Iggy is a little bit random here. Um, when he comes out of the shell after the fourth pipe, he is a little bit random. Okay, good. You can sometimes, if you, like, miss time, either miss time your jump, then he has a tendency of coming out of the, coming out of the shell really late and, ju and jukes your timing. And it's really frustrating when it happens, because then that's a 10 second loss, or even worse, if he goes into a pipe and, and comes back onto the ceiling. So not a very fun boss fight at all. Okay, World 6. World 6, in my opinion, is the hardest world to optimize. There's a lot of really precise movement. So we'll see what happens. Nice, 77. That means I played the level perfectly. Okay, so the very old world record of uh, of this category you used to do this level as Nabbit, uh, but um, it the platforming is really hard with Nabbit because you because with Nabbit you'd be jumping on these um, note blocks and uh, you could collide with different note with other note blocks as well. Um, like you would lose all your you would sometimes lose your momentum when bouncing off these note blocks because. Uh, if you're bouncing on a note block, but and then the tile, and then the, the next tile right after the note block that you're jumping on is another note block, you can sometimes hit it and lose, cause you, cause you lose your, lose your momentum. So I just go with the more consistent way of going bad with the level. Uh oh, okay. All right, we're safing that out. Uh, come on. Alright, still got it. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. So, I just clipped through a hidden block. Uh, those were two hidden blocks, by the way, and I just clipped through one of them. It saves six seconds if you can do so, but because I messed up in the beginning, I probably didn't save those six seconds overall. Uh, but it's really cool to do. It's really hard. So I'm really glad I got it. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy Boom Boom, because unfortunately, this is the very last time you're going to be fighting him. And to make to make it very fun, uh, Kamek decides to give him wings. And, well, he can fly really high. Um, and if you're very used to his timing, well, you better get used to this timing, because he gets up really late on in this fight. Still 89, all right. <laughs> 
Alright, so for this next level, I'm gonna be getting the secret exit. Um, and the secret exit will, will help me skip one level. Am I good at the game? Being good is relative. Being fast is pretty obvious. I guess you could say that. My jump game? Yeah. yeah, I guess you could say that. Okay, so this is the sumo bro. Um, just like most boss fights, it's pretty simple. It's really easy if you're either small. Okay. Well, that's not a good boss fight. Okay, there. It's easy if you have the either the acorn suit or small. Uh, when you're big, you can't really fight this guy. You have to do a, a bit of a slower strat uh, on this guy. Because uh, basically what I'm doing here is I'm actually flipping right through him with the acorn power up. Um, and you can only do that if you're if you have any sort of one tile um, sprite on you. I guess if you're I guess you could say that you could say you're one tile. Uh, I don't I don't I don't know how to I don't know how to describe it. But basically, when you're small or or you have an acorn power up, then you can make the boss fight look pretty easy. All right, so this is the reason why I got the secret exit. Without the secret exit of 6-5, you wouldn't be able to access the back entrance of Roy's castle. And the back entrance saves a lot of time over doing the regular entrance. Because as you can see, it took me six seconds to already get to the boss fight. So, really fast. Okay, so that's World 6. So this is a- so that was a really good World 6. There was a- with- I guess the exception of the Fortress being the only- being the biggest mistake- mistake of the world, but even- even then, that's not- nothing too my, uh, major. Okay, so roll seven. Uh, I'd have to say I'd have to tie this with world six for being a really hard world. Um, it's hard, and there's RNG in this world, so very fun, especially towards, especially at this point of the run where it's near the end. Uh oh. Um, that's bad. Oh, yes. So that jump right there is a two-frame window to make that jump. Otherwise, you could run into a fuzzy 
and die, or you won't, or you, or you just, uh, will, will make the jump, but hit the fuzzy and die. So, it's a really brutal level. I have to consider this to be the scariest level in the run, in any category for that matter, especially 100%. Now this level, wait, take that back. I don't, I don't, I don't consider Seven Nation One to be the hardest level. This level right here is the hardest level. It's so hard that I tried to look up the fastest strategies uh, to go about with this level, but I don't know. This level's, this level's something. Yo, I beat it. Let's go. The run. Okay, this okay. level is really hard because this not only it's a hard level, but there is RNG involved. This is the bane of all any percent runs, but um, in this category, it's not really that big, but it can still lose. It can still lose you a a handful of seconds if things go wrong. Okay, so this part right here is a bit of an auto-scroller. Not much we can do to speed this part up. Okay, so we're fighting the Magikoopa, or more commonly known as Kamek. Now Kamek will spawn in random locations of the room. Okay, that was a good first spawn. Oh, that was not a good second spawn. Okay, well actually that was good, but I didn't react fast enough to it. Because, uh, oh well. Okay, that was a that was a good that was a little bit of a good recovery. And then the third spawn, he always spawns in the middle. So, not hard, but it can it can definitely lose you a lot of time if you can't if you don't react fast enough to where he spawns. We did receive twenty dollars from an anonymous donator saying. Hey, have to head to work. I can't tell you how entertaining your run has been. I'll pick it up at the VOD later. I hope my donation goes to a good cause. Thank you. Okay, so that was a YOLO jump that I just did right there. Uh, I, call it a Yolo, I call it a YOLO jump because you can't really see where you're going to land. Uh, unless you time your spins right. But that jump is solely the only reason why Nata saves time because the fastest time you get is an 88 and you can you can do that with Luigi uh, this level is easier with Luigi because you can just fly down to the secret exit but um, obviously use Nabbit because 88 you'll get fireworks and you'll get a star which could be useful but not this not at this point of the run so getting the secret exit here in this ghost house skips a lot of levels and one of those three levels that I just skipped there is an auto-scroller, so you definitely don't want to deal with that at all. Okay, so there's a really hard strat that I'm going to try and go for. I thought about it uh, before the event, whether or not I want to go for it, but I think I'm going to- I think I'm just going to chance it. Go big, go home. Alright, we got it. That's really risky. Um, you have to go through- you have to go in between those fire bars. Um, and if you don't do it correctly, then you will get hit. Dang. So normally in this fight, 
Um, Ludwig will clone himself, and well, well, he will he will turn to three different clones, and you have to guess which one's the right Ludwig, and the right Lud Ludwig is the one that shoots the most fireballs. But with the Acorn power up, you can skip that whole cycle. Okay, so coming up is the airship of World 7. And there is a skip that you can do. It is normally an auto scroller, but you can skip it. Um, and it's really hard, so hopefully I can get it. I have a reputation of messing this of messing the skip up whenever I'm on a good run. Because that because when I'm on a good run, my heart rate goes up really high. So the nerves kinda get to me here. So hopefully the nerves won't get to me here this time. We got it. So yeah, you're supposed to ride in this cloud, and while you're riding this cloud, there's this giant fist that will kill you in one hit if you get hit by it, um, but, and as well as a lot of bombs trying to shoot at you as well. Uh, but we skip, we managed to skip all of that, thankfully. Okay, so if you thought I made that fight look really easy, well, it's not easy because Bowser Genius Hitbox is really, really bad. So, sometimes you hit him, sometimes you just get hit for no reason. It just doesn't make sense. But thankfully that fight did not go very poorly. It, it The fight is really hard if you do not have an acorn. So if you were to do like a Navit category of all castles, then it can be painful. Do I hate Mario and like Luigi instead? I like both characters. Yeah, there are things I like about Mario and there are things I like about Luigi. But personally, I like Luigi more. Because, I mean, think about it. Luigi doesn't really get a lot of games of his own. And I think he needs more of an adventure than Mario. Mario is kind of... Luigi doesn't get appreciated enough. Let's just say that. Luigi also has personality. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Okay, so in Luigi only, this level sucks. And that's because there are these raining fireballs, and... It is random where they drop, um, and how big the fireballs are is also random. So at right here, I'm gonna get the secret exit, and see right there, uh, I just went through a fireball. If I was playing as Luigi, I would have got hit by that fireball, and there was nothing I could have done about it. It's just, it's not a very fun level to do as Luigi. <laughs> So interesting thing is that in Mario Bros. U, you would do 8-2 and 8-3 instead 
uh, of doing 8-4 as I'm doing right now. Um, and that is because... And that is because in Mario Bros. U, there is an auto scroller skip in 8-2 uh, that that is it saves time over doing 8-4 in that game. Because in 8-4 in, in, in that game is a really, really long auto scroller. Okay, so coming up is Elevator Skip, and in Mario Bros. U, it is notoriously known as as the hardest trick in the game. So we'll see what happens in this game. Okay, so that's the first part out of the way. And that's the second part of the game. Or, that was the second part out of the way. What do you guys think? That was hard, right? Alright, so now we are on to the last level of the run. And that is the final battle. Okay, so in this first part right here, Bowser Jr. is gonna try and ruin your day. He's gonna stomp on you with this clown car right here, but um, where he stomps is completely dependent on your movement. So as long as you do exactly this movement right here, um, it'll always be the same. I've always seen this room exactly like this, every time. Okay, so coming up is Bowser, and this is the hardest boss in the whole game. Yes, I beat him! Woo! Whoa, what's this? What? What are these guys doing? Okay, Kamek is spreading magic around. What? Do you guys know what's going on? Well, before anything else happens, let's go ahead and rescue the princess. Oh my goodness, Bowser's huge! We've never seen this before! Okay, so what I just did there is fireball skip. If you just fly right in front of his face, he will skip his second fireball, and that saves two seconds. Now here... Um... Whoa, okay, that was close. Uh, you can actually, uh, take- you can actually hop onto the clown car, uh, right be- um, right before Bowser Jr. Get gets on. And that's actually- that actually saves a lot of time in this fight. Okay, we got the second time. So yeah, this saves a lot of time in the fight. I believe it saves around 40 seconds total. And time's coming up. After this final hit. Alright. 
So the time was 105.03, which is a really insane time for a marathon, I will have to say. Um, so that is actually uh, 36 seconds off of world record. So I'm really happy with this run. Um, so the world record is 104.27 by me. Um, and my goal of, the, of, of this run was to beat my last marathon run that I did back in speedrun that changed the world, which in that, in that run, I got a 106.20. So I'm really, ha I'm really happy that I was able to achieve that goal during this run. Um, I would like to give a shout out to E. Waller. Um, e. Waller's 100% video inspired me to pick this game up as a speedrun. And I just had a lot of fun uh, running this game uh, since then. I found a lot of strats to optimize this cate this particular category to what it is now, um, as well as um, helping out uh, the rest of the community in uh, of New Super Luigi. Um, I would also like to thank the organizers for um, uh, for organizing this event, as well as letting me participate. So it was really awesome of you guys. For, for you to do to hold this event um, and I guess I don't really have much else to say uh, so if you want to if you want to learn this game uh, we have a discord server of the entire new Super Mario Bros. series uh, so if you want to pick up any of the new Super Mario Bros. series in general then uh, feel, feel free to hit us up we'll be able to, to help you help you out and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, so with that, I guess I'm signing off. So thank you, thank you guys so much for letting me run this. All right, thank you very much, Jim Chan. Uh, that was a new Super Mario, uh, Super Luigi U. I almost said Super Mario. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> they grew up with the games. <laughs> Up next, though, we have Undertale. It is going to be a true pacifist race. Yep, true pacifist ending race. To love Fiber 7. So stick around. We are going to be taking the stream down briefly in order to prepare for the next, uh, for the race. So do not panic. I repeat, do not While we wait for the next run to get ready, we have a $5 donation from Extreme Foosball, California native here. Thanks for doing this marathon. You're welcome, Extreme Foosball. We are doing this marathon in support of the Red Cross. They're helping out with a lot of wildfires across California and other Northwestern states. And we're hoping that we can help out with this marathon. Up next, we have Undertale, as mentioned. We do have a donation bid war for that. Uh, between Hugging and Shunning the Goat. I believe currently... Currently, there is nothing in there. So, if you want the goat to be hugged or shunned, you can make the difference right now, if you like.
And coming up after Undertale, we have Super Bomberman R. And for that game, we also have a bid war to choose the color of Bomberman. That also has nothing in it yet, so you can choose Bomberman's colors. Additionally, our first name incentive will be later tonight with Nights into Dreams. You can choose the file name for that. Nothing's been put towards that either, so hey. There's a lot of things open for whatever people want. All right, and the stream is going to go down for just a moment. Don't panic, we'll be right back.